What's going on guys, Assalamu Alaikum, Nelson here, a Lenovo Developer Advocate. So let's carry on this Docker series and in this video I want to teach you about Docker Compose. So you've seen that, uh, you've learned about Docker images, containers, how to run them, how to manage, how to stop them, so on and so forth, right? But you've seen that we actually have to execute one command for each of those containers, right? So you know, if you want to spin up the Nginx container or um, any other container, right? We need to basically say docker run and then the name and then expose the port, so on and so forth, right? But what about if we want to have a file with a definition of all the containers that we want to run? And this is what Docker Compose allows us to do. So we can manage all of those containers under one single file. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, so smash that like button and comment down below. Seriously, comment down below. And also, um, if you want to follow along, and I highly recommend you basically, there is a $100 credit that you can use to basically spin up all the, all the resources that Linode has to offer so you can play around. And you'll see that it's amazing and it's been really easy for us to get up and running with Docker and deploying applications that can uh, go off to real users, right? So uh, without further ado, let's kick off this video. So throughout the series, you've learned about Docker, the commands, how to create containers, images, uh, connecting to registry, so on and so forth. Now in here, if I type docker ps, you can see that I have a list of containers. And basically we've been creating containers by saying, for example, docker run. So here, for example, here's a, a command, right? So docker run dash t. And if I put this bigger, just like this, and then uh, clear the screen. So here, so docker run, and then the pour, and then this is the image name, right? Now, what Docker Compose allows us to do is to have one file and then define the list of containers that we want to spin up in one single command. And the cool thing about it is that we can have dependency between these containers. So what I want to show you here is the following. So let me put this full screen. So what I want to show you is the following. We're going to basically use MongoDB. So we're going to spin up a MongoDB as well as Mongo Express, which is the UI for connecting to the MongoDB. So here, let me just uh, basically uh, cancel out of this. And in here, to use Docker Compose, so we can say Docker dash and then Compose. And here, if I press Enter, you should see that we have basically a list of commands. So you can basically read this through, but let me just cut to the chase. So here, have a look. This command, so Docker Compose up, create and start containers. So here, let me just clear the screen, docker dash compose, and then up. And you see that can't find suitable configuration file, docker dash compose dot YML or YAML or docker dash compose dot yaml with an a in there right so let's together create the uh, docker compose file so docker dash compose dot and then yaml just like that and in here what we're going to do is the following we're going to create a set of configuration for spinning up a mongodb as well as the mongo express so the first thing that we need here is so i've just pressed i in there and i want to say version so this is using YAML syntax. So here I'm going to say 3.8. So this is the current version for running the configuration for Docker Compose files. Then we also need to have uh, services. So here, this basically inside. So this dictates, uh, basically here dictates the services that we have for our uh, Compose i.e. the containers that we want. So here, let's just name this as Mongo and then DB. So this is the name and you'll see this in a second. Now inside here, we want to define the actual image. So I'm going to say image and this is the image 
that we want. So here I'm going to say Mongo. So this will be the MongoDB colon, and then we can say latest here. So you've learned about tags. Now we also can have the container underscore and the name. So this will be the uh, name of the container. And basically uh, when we said dash dash name, this is the same thing. So here I want to say ports and for the ports, I want to basically uh, expose. So here I want to expose the default port for Mongo, which is 27017. And we're going to map that to 21 uh, or oh, actually uh, 27. So, so my bad. So 27, 0, 1, 7 to the uh, running container, right? So, and here this should be like this. So this is an array, right? Because you can have more than one port. So then now that we have the port, let's also define a volume because we want to persist data. So you've learned about also volume. So here I'm going to say volumes. And inside here, I want to say uh, this will be an array. And then here I'm going to say data will follow or actually will map to forward slash data inside of the container. And I'm going to show you how to create the volume in a second. And also let's define some environment variables. So environment, environment, and then here, column. And here I'm going to say basically dash. So this is an array. And I'm going to say mongo underscore db underscore init db underscore root underscore username, just like that. Oops, username. And then this will be equals to root. So let's just say that this is root and then user. And here I'm going to yank this and this will be mongo db and then init user and then you guess it right. So password. So here, pass and then word. And here, let's also have a saying root and then pass. So this now is our service. So here, let me just uh, basically we need to create the volume, right? So here we have the services and now we have uh, volumes. Now here, make sure that you add column there. And basically, uh, we want to define. So here I want to say data column, and then this will be an empty volume. So just like this. Now, this data right here refers to this one. And then forward slash refers to the path inside of the container. Now, let me just for now, let's just uh, escape and then column WQ. And now let's run Docker compose up and then enter. And this actually failed because it says either specify a supported version. So it looks like uh, um, the latest version in here is not supported. So I think he was saying what, which version that he was complaining. So 3.3, .3. let's, let's use that one instead. So three point and then three. So this uh, doesn't really change anything. So let's just use 3.3 .3 and then let's, now say docker compose and then up. And sure enough, this time you can see that it works, right? So here you can see creating network and then creating volume and then pulling MongoDB and then latest. Now just give it a second. And this is familiar, right, to you. So what we're doing is we basically spinning up a container, but using docker compose. And there we go. So you can see that now it says waiting for connections. And then this is the port. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control Z for a second and then clear the screen and then type Docker PS. So now have a look, we have this container right here, which is running, right? So this now is a container that we run through Docker compose, which is nice. So let's explore the API. So docker dash compose and then dash dash help. So I just want to show you how to navigate around when you don't know much about um, the tool that you are using. So you can use dash help and you can see here you have events, you have help, images, kill, PS, so on and so forth. So let's just say docker compose dash or actually uh, not dash but PS 
and there we go. So you can see that we have one container which is managed by Docker Compose. Now here, if I want to stop, if I want to stop the services, I can say Docker, oh actually Docker dash compose, and then stop. And I've misspelled compose there, so compose. And there we go. So you can see that this is stopping. And if you want to start, right? So if you want to start, you can say docker dash compose and then start. And now this will start the container. So there we go. That was quick. And if I type docker ps or actually <laughs> docker dash compose ps, you can see that it's up right here. You can also remove. So let's say that let's say that you want to tear down everything, right? So you can say down, stop and remove containers, networks, images, so on and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say vi and then docker compose.yaml. And in here, let's add a second service. So I'm going to press I and the second service will be Mongo Express. So Mongo dash and then Express. Now, this is the name again. So this is the name. And in here, I'm going to say image column and then this will be mongo dash express and again we can use latest here so latest and if you don't specify late if you don't specify column latest you're just going to use the latest anyways as you as you've seen before right so here let's just uh say container underscore name this will be mongo and then express there we go and then what we're going to do is we're going to say ports column and then the port that we want for this. So let's use. So this will be an array just like that. And the port that we want is so you can either put in quotes or not. But the port that I want for this is let's say 80, 81 maps to 80, 81 on the container. So now in here, I need to specify the environment. So environment and inside in here. So in order for us to connect to this Mongo database, we can use the following environment variables. So here I'm going to say dash and then me underscore config underscore and then MongoDB underscore admin username. So this has to be the same. So root and then user. And I'm going to yank that. So, oops. So, oops, escape there uh, for a second. Yank and then paste that. And I'm going to paste that twice because I need an extra environment variable. So this will be a password just like that. And then this is root and then pass. So basically this and this has to match, right? And then finally, in here, I'm going to say MongoDB. So MongoDB, and this is Mongo specific. So this is the um, Mongo, and then this is the server. So server, oops, all in caps. There we go. And now if I basically, you can see that um, this is Mongo Express. And also uh, let's actually add one more thing here. And that is that we want restart. So if this container fails for some reason, uh, we want this to always restart. So here I'm going to say always. There we go. And then escape out of this and then WQ. And now let me just clear the screen and then type Docker compose. And remember is up. So here you should see that now we have pulling Mongo Express. So this is cool. So just give it a second. And again, you can see that you can see and again, you can see that server is open to allow connections from anyone. So here, um, let's go ahead and basically press command Z for a second. And if I say docker dash compose and then PS, we should see that we have two right here. So Mongo and Mongo Express. So here, 
um, you saw when I said Docker Compose, we had to say, um, we had to press Z. So you can also run this in detach mode if you want. So here, let's, for the sake of it, let's just say Docker Compose and then down. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So here, so this now destroyed everything. So Docker Compose PS, you should see nothing. So now I can say Docker Compose up dash and then D for detach. So just give it a second. And this now will create both MongoDB, so or Mongo and Mongo Express, which is cool. Now, if I type uh, Docker Compose PS, you could see that we have Mongo and Mongo Express. Now, this guy right here is listening on 8081 and then forward, forward, forwarding the traffic to 8081 on the container, which means that if I open up my web browser in here, let's just change this to 8081 and check this out. So this is really cool. So we can go and create a database. So let's just say test, for example, there we go. We have a test database. We can view so on and so forth. So this is the power of Docker Compose. Now Docker Compose is used, for example, when, um, you know, in this example where you have a backend, a front end, and with one command, you want to bring it up um, so that you can access the application, right? So usually it's really great for local development. So if you want to learn more about Docker Compose, so here Docker Compose, they have amazing documentation. So overview of Docker Compose and in here they have everything. So you can see install um, Docker Compose, uh, environment file, getting started and a bunch of other things, right? But here, they have information about Docker Compose. You can see that I was trying to use the version uh, 3.8 and actually they have 3.9 now, but I couldn't use, but you saw that we have version services. We name this and then basically have two images. So this is web and Redis is the exact same thing that we've done. And we also have an empty volume. And basically I've just showed you how to use Docker Compose in a nutshell. And to be honest, it doesn't get more complicated than this. So there you have it. This is everything about Docker Compose. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a message. Also comment that below and let me know what you thought about this video. And in the next video, we're going to learn about debugging. So how to debug within Docker and then a, um, a preview on Kubernetes. So this is all for now and I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.